Hi, I'm Dave, and welcome to another episode of At Home Science. Today we're going to be talking about the science of magic. Now, if that doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, don't worry, I have a friend who's on their way that will make everything crystal clear for both of us. But until they get here, I have a game to play. Can you count how many times I flip this coin while talking about science and magic? Sounds easy, right? Give it a shot. Here we go. Now, a lot of people think about magic as being something supernatural, but in fact, that is absolutely not true. Magic is the application of a kind of science called psychology. Psychology involves explaining and understanding how the brain and mind work and experience the world. As it turns out, there are a ton of studies on different holes in the way that we understand the universe. Those holes, or shortcuts the brain takes, can be exploited to make people remember things that weren't there, or just not pay attention when they really should. That's enough times. So, how many times would the coin flipped? Were you right? Were you wrong? Doesn't matter. Because how many of you noticed that the person that handed me this stack of scientific studies was none other than my friend Santa Claus? Don't believe me? Go ahead. Rewind the video, check, and watch as Santa hands me the science. The reason that was able to work is because our brains are only able to handle so much at any one time. Psychologists call what happened there inattentional blindness, where things that are part of a scene that our brains don't think are important are literally forgotten and never recorded. And that's what magicians use to do a lot of tricks, except we apply it in what's called misdirection, where we force people to think that this or something else like it is important so they pay attention, whereas what's happening in the background is actually important but is completely ignored. This is possible because our brains don't function like a video camera. We pick and choose elements of the scene, record the details about those, and then when remembering them actually paint in the background with what we figure should have been there. And that can be a huge problem because if you're painting in things that weren't there or forgetting things that are, how reliable is your memory anyway? Do you really know what's real? That's the magic. So now I'll perform for you my favorite magic trick. And after I've finished and hopefully fooled you, I'll show you how the trick is done, unlike most magicians. And then I will explain the cognitive science that makes this so magical and why that works. So let's go. The trick is called the vanishing coin. So I want you to keep an eye on this coin to see if I can make it vanish. Are you ready? Waving my hand mystically to distract you until I make the coin disappear. Get it? Disappear? Because you can't see it anymore? No? Tough crowd. All right, maybe I need to make something bigger disappear. Like, for example, the entire cup! Ha! No? That's okay. Because remember what I was talking about earlier about misdirection? What if the cup was a misdirection and the coin had actually vanished? <clears throat> Let's try that again. What if the cup was misdirection and the coin had actually vanished? <sighs> what if the cup... That's right. Misdirection only works if you don't expect the result. So now for a different camera angle to show you how the trick's done. First off, the coin goes on the table. You draw attention to the coin and cover it with the cup. You then use some terrible jokes to distract the audience before covering it again. And here's where the magic comes in. Move the, the cup and the paper off the coin once, holding it over your lap, returning it again over the coin before you put it over your lap a second time. And here's where the secret move happens. You loosen your hold on the paper so the cup falls into your lap. Holding the shape of the cup the paper towel, you return it to the table and you make the whole thing vanish. Just like that. So the reason why the trick is magical is because it does what's called an expectation violation. From when we're very young, we learn how cups behave. They're solids, they don't vanish. Those are really the only important things about cups. So when suddenly reality that we're seeing doesn't match up, our brain gets thrown for a loop because everything we've learned up to that point about how 
physics functions suddenly isn't right, which is why it's so impressive, because our brains are trying to realign what they've just seen with everything else they've experienced in the past. The second part of this trick is that intentional bias we talked about earlier. By getting people to pay attention to the coin, this is the misdirection. Their attention's on the coin, and so everything else happening with the cup and the paper gets less focus, so that when the cup vanishes, people aren't going to notice that secret move. So in short, magicians are technically psychologists, and the more shortcuts they can force your brain to take, the more magical their tricks are going to seem. If you want to do the trick we showed today, make sure you practice over and over again until you've got it perfect. Because magic only works when everything is seamless and you can use that intentional bias. That's all from me, your scientific magician. If you want to know more about cognitive science and magic tricks, follow the link in the description or leave a comment and we'll get back to you with more magic tricks and more cognitive science. Thanks so much for joining us and so long.